Um, while I'm getting this pulled up, Johnny, you, if you want, you can go ahead and start us out with prayer. Okay. So, dear Lord, thank you for gathering us here today to study your word. Let us soak in what you want us to learn and help us acknowledge it. Amen. Amen. All right, so... Is it chapter 18? Uh, just so we tell the people. Part where... two. Okay. Chapter, yeah, we was in chapter 18. Remember last week we went up to verse 15. So we're starting with 16. Um, and we talked, uh, it was a three angels that came and visited Abraham. Because remember this point, his name was changed. So now we're at the point where Abraham pleads for Sodom. Um, and uh, I'll go ahead and let you take it over from here, Johnny. It starts verse 16 through 22. And then I got, um, yeah, like I said, we've only got a few slides. but So, like I said, it doesn't matter how short or quick it takes. It's basically just getting the word out there today and... When it ends, it ends. If it winds up being 15 minutes, then so be it. And if it winds up being an hour and a half, so be it. Okay. I'll do my best. Oh, my, oh my goodness. I'm taking all these pictures off my Nikon picture. Camera, yeah. I didn't realize. I still had pictures from uh, Christmas. Oh, my leg. <laughs> wow. Oh. I had my leg hurt. Oh. I forgot. You guys can't see the slides yet because I didn't share. I was waiting for you to start reading, Johnny. I forgot. I didn't share my screen yet. Yeah, I was going to tell you your screen. That might help just a little bit. Oh, there we go. There we go. That better? Yeah. <laughs> Now if we can get the slide, there we go. All right, now we're yeah, that's better. Now we're cooking. I don't know what's blocking the bottom part of the screen, but oh, that. There we go. Now you should be able to see everything. Okay. Uh, it says the men got up to leave, and they looked down towards soda. And Abram walked along with them and to along, walked along with them to see them on their way. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abram and what from Abraham what I am about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation and <clears throat> all nations on earth earth will <clears throat> be blessed through him for I have chosen him to the way of the Lord doing what is right and just to and just so that the Lord will bring about for for Abraham what he promised him then the Lord said to the uh, outcry against Sodom of Gomorrah, well, that's a long word, is so great and their sin so grievous that I will go down to see what they have done is as bad as the country that has reached, that has preached me. If not, I will know the men turned away and went to the Lord and and went toward Sodom, but Abraham re re remained standing before the Lord. Oh, my shoulder pop. Just look, we got one. Okay. So he's got two slides. I got two slides here with stuff that you had, so... I'll let you read those, and then um, 
we can go ahead and discuss before we get on to the last bit of scripture. Because I don't have anything after the ending of scripture, so we'll go through this, discuss, read the last bit of scripture, and then discuss, and then that'll be it. Okay. Okay, it says uh, Genesis 18, 16, 22. Uh, because the Lord saw that Abraham would be faithful in keeping the, the covenants, he revealed to Abraham what he would what he would do with the Sodom and Gomorrah as we read explain that while the prophet of Joseph Smith was working on his in, inspired translation of the Bible he learned more about what the Lord planned to do with Sodom and why and invite a student to read out loud the following except from the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible you you may want to provide a copy to each student the the bowl text represents material added by the prophet and uh, that's scratched out it represents material to be removed oh okay, okay. I remember that part uh, and it says and the angel of the Lord and the angel of the Lord said unto Abraham the Lord said unto us because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great it is great and because their sin is very grievous I will destroy them oh yeah because that's, that's what the Lord does he destroys all the all the bad oh. and shoulder I will I will send you out. shoulder Dang it. I will send you and you shall go to uh, down to the see the I can't read that text. Hang on me. The what's that word? See the Iniquities? Iniquities, there we go. Removed onto them, and shall have all things done all together according to the cry of, to the cry of it, which was come on come onto me. Yeah, that's what I have from from there, and then it says, "Ye shall do it." You, ye shall do do not shall be upon your hands for I will destroy them and you shall know that I will do it for do it for it shall be before your eyes okay and then it says and the angels which were holy and were sent forth after the order of, of of God turned their faces from their 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 and toward Sodom. Joseph said translation Genesis eighteen nineteen and twenty three bold bold uh and strike through Added okay. Invite the student. It just says like for the student to to read out loud to help uh, students discover what. Uh, see Genesis eighteen twenty out loud to help student discover what was included. Is previous being committed by people in Sodom and Gomorrah. 
invite invite the student to read um then I gotta catch my breath. Hang on. Yeah, just just for the student to read the uh, Genesis eighteen twenty eight and then eight uh, Genesis nineteen five and Genesis eighteen twenty. I don't remember getting these. Um, that's all I got. Okay. Actually. Um. Let's see, we got. Okay, um, you can read that if you want, or we can look back at eighteen. Um, look at those scriptures and discuss. Unless you want to go over uh, what's in this slide, it's up to you. But this is the other sli uh, last slide of what you sent me. Oh, okay, okay. So accept me. and practice the inhabitants of Sodom near the seas and see Jude, Jude 1 and 7 the people I mean the pro, the prophet excuse me uh, Ezekiel spoke of additional sins that plagued the inhabitants of Sodom he he declared that they were full of pride and and idleness, and that although they had a fullness of bread, they they rejected poor and needy. See Ezekiel sixteen forty nine and fifty, based on verse twenty. How does the Lord view be oh my gosh, homosexual be behavior. Oh my gosh. I didn't think I got that. Not bad about that. As a very grievous sin, all violations of the law of ch chari charity or sexual sin sexual sins are very serious. Yep, that's true. Write the following truth on the board homosexual behavior is very is a very serious sin you may want to explain that from the beginning and consistently throughout the scriptures the lord has condemned violations of the law of of chest of chastity i said charity my bad it's kind of hard to see that it's all right. Including homosexual behavior. Consider inviting the students to read Romans 1, 24 and 32. No, this topic of the same attraction requires great, sen great sensitivity. As your class discusses this issue, ensure that this is done with kindness, compassion, and and civil <coughs> What's that word? Civility. Civility. That's good. That was a mouthful, Johnny. Um, like I said, I'll leave it up to you to open discussions. If you want, I can look up these scriptures that's here. Um, well, I, I, I got I, I, I gotta say something about this slide. Yep, go ahead. It's like this is very serious. Like what I just read. I, I apologize for the. I don't want this this. I don't want this thing to get demonetized, but I didn't think I printed that. I was just reading over it, and I, I didn't see that word. No, but you know what? Yeah, no, very you're fine. Serious. Let's, you know what? I know why you put it there, because if you want, let's look back. Oops. It's at 18 through 23. Let me go ahead and read that real quick, and then I think you might understand again why, why that's there. So Abraham, Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord, 
by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, now remember they did a lot of wickedness, is so great and their sins so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that was reached to me. If not, I will know. The men turned away and went towards Sodom, but Abraham returned standing before the Lord. Um, I was look as you was reading that, I was interested in Jude 1 7. So I looked that up on my phone to see what it said. And it said, In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and their surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They served as an example of those who suffered the punishment of eternal fire. So I get why you feel bad for putting that on there, but don't feel bad about it because this is talking about how bad Sodom and Gomorrah was. They gave in to sexual homo. Se homo Sexual behaviors. Now, do you know what that is, Johnny? Yeah, when two guys like each other. Yep, yeah, okay, there you go. I figured you did. I want to see. It's a touchy subject, so I get your feelings on that. Because even in the text, it was, it even says at the end right here, it says, ensure that it's done with kindness, compassion, and civility, which means we don't want to judge others, but we want to point out that this is serious. God frowns against the gays. Um, now, does that mean a gay person can't make it to heaven? I'm, I'm not going to go that far as to say that because they can change their ways. He's not, he doesn't frown on the gay person. It's the homosexual act that is, that is a sin. And that's what people have a hard time differentiating about when you have a conviction against the sin people think you're judging the person and that's not right you're not judging the person i mean i'm friends with a lot of gay men i think they're very good friends very nice and very noble and yeah, some of them know how to decorate their apartment better than i do but i just don't agree with their lifestyle that's the only, that's the only thing you know as long as you know, it's like, I don't care what you do behind closed doors. I'm friends with you, and then let's leave it at that. But some people think you can't differentiate between the two. They think if you judge the sin, you're judging the person, and that's not true. Yeah, I like the way you read that. You're right. You feel a little bit better about that now, Joe? I, I get why you'd feel like, you know, wonder why you put that there, but is that, does that make your mind a little more at ease and understand why it's there now? Why you put it there now? Yeah, I understand. Okay. I, I'm just real against that, to be honest. Yeah, and so is the Bible, like, and that's why it's there. It's not for it. It's, against, it's agreeing with you on being against it. Um, it clearly says that it's an abomination to the Lord. In Leviticus 18.22, I believe. I just felt God's spirit when I was reading that. Like, I just felt the... Uh, and that's the hardest thing about, you know, when you talk to a, somebody in that lifestyle, you want to save their soul, but you have to be careful not to offend them, too. You know, that's the hard very, part. Very hard to explain how God frowns on that lifestyle without offending them. That's why too, so many people just love them, and that's as far as it goes. But to me, if you just love the person, how is that witnessing to them and getting them out of the lifestyle so that they can be saved and go to heaven? Yeah. Yeah, amen to that. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. No, like I said, we we're really pointing out that one thing, but obviously, it just goes, just basically showing you how bad Sodom and Gomorrah is. Um, 
I don't want to add any more yet because we're going to get to it in the, in the next bit of scriptures. Well, uh, uh, basically, just homosexual behavior, but it's talking about all unnatural sex. Sex um, to a man and a woman outside of wedlock. It's talking about, and this is kind of gross, but when somebody has sex with an animal, and there are people that do that. Yeah. It's not natural sex. And that's what God frowns on. Okay. He created Adam and Eve as a man and a woman for a purpose. He gave them the right. Exactly. Okay. He gave them the right, for lack of a better term, connection so that they could come together, conceive a, a baby of their own. Yeah. We just. We want everybody out there that's watching us later. Like, let's say there there is somebody's gay that's watching us, and you know, hopefully this makes them feel convicted. But we don't want anybody that's watching us to feel like we're judging them or anything like that. We're just pointing out what Scripture is saying about this stuff. That you know, God's against it. Um, but they don't give us the right to judge or look somebody down or degrade somebody because, you know, they did choose that lifestyle. Um, no. We're just here to point out that the Bible's against it, um, but we still love the person. We just don't agree with the act. And we just want to stress that we love the person, but we do not agree with the act. We can't, we want to be friends with you people, with those people, but please don't Confront us with your sinful act. Please have the decency to keep it behind closed doors. Like, yes, please. Okay. Like you would want us to do about things that you don't like. Yeah, because I know there's a lot of people, I know on my bus, they, when it comes to certain subjects along lines like this, people tend to get really touchy about it, but we're just going strictly by what the Bible is saying. Um, and I think we're going to leave it there because don't, we don't want to keep beating a dead horse. Um, but we made a lot yeah. of it clear. The Bible's against it. We're against it, but we're not against the person. We're against the act. You obviously haven't uh, gone farther than Gen gone to Genesis 19 yet, which talks more about this act. Yeah. So there's a chapter that we, we're going to have to touch, tap lightly around. <laughs> well, guess what, Brenda? I think that's your chapter. Because uh, remember, I'm doing a study over the armor of God. And then that puts you in chapter 19. Now, if you want to pass that off to somebody else, I'll give you the opportunity to pass it off. But that's... <laughs> <clears throat> that's fine. But just remember, next weekend, I'll be out of town. Okay. Yeah, me, me too. Okay, then we'll, we uh, won't have Bible study next, which is actually fine. It actually works out great because uh, with going to Cedar Point this Tuesday and Wednesday, I was considering dashing Saturday anyway to make up for those lost days. So that actually works out perfectly. So there won't be a Bible study next week then. Okay, good. Yeah, because I don't know if I'm going to be here either. Okay. Yeah, there more time to study up on this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got to do some more study on the um, armor of God, too, see if I can. I mean, I've already got something together, but I still want to dig into that, see if I can't find anything else or not. All right, Johnny, so this is the last slide. I'll let you go ahead and read this, and we'll discuss it, and that will finish off the Bible study for, for today. Okay. Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the... What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep away and not share the place for the sake of the 50 righteous people in it? Far be it from... Do you... Far, far be it from you to do such thing to kill the righteous with the wicked. Treating the righteous and the wicked alike far far be it from you will not 
<clears throat> you will not judge of the earth to do it right. This is the Lord and uh, it's a lot, sorry. The Lord said if I find fifty righteous people in the in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their for their sake. Then Abraham spoke up again. Now that I have been so bold to speak to the Lord through I am nothing but dust and ashes. What if the number of of righteous lies less than fifty? <coughs> I will will you destroy the whole city for the lack of five people? If I find forty five there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again spoke to him, what if only 40 are found there? He said, for time's sake of 40, I will not do it. He said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak to say of 40, I will not. Oh, speak. what if only 30 be found there? He answered, I will not do it. If I find 33, if I find 30 there, what if, what if there can be found there? He answered, I will not do it. I will find 30 there. Abraham said, now that if I've been so bold as to speak with the Lord, what if only 20 on, what if 20 are to be found there? He said, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak to just one more. What if only 10 can be found there? He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left and Abraham returned home. Okay, I got a question for you, Johnny. Do you think Abraham was very brave in what he asked the Lord? I guess. Because. Oh, boy. Okay, yeah, what yeah. was. Here's, here's a big thing to think about. Okay, what was God getting ready to do? Oh, to destroy it. Okay, now what to, is Abraham asking God to do? To not destroy it. Okay. Wouldn't you say that's pretty bold that God's made his decision that he's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and right off the bat Abraham comes will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked if there are 50 righteous people? Oh, yeah, he, he was brave to ask him that. <laughs> now, think about it. He asked one, two, three, four, five, six times. First is Holy. 50. Then, Because I wrote down the numbers because I find this pretty interesting because it's about the only thing I'm getting out of this and then I'm going to discuss what I got, and then I, I want to get your guys' input. And I'm not trying to take away from you, Johnny, but since I didn't see anything on this, um, I figured this is just up for open discussion. So I went from 50 to 45, five less. Then he went from 45 to 40, five less. And then he asked 30, so he even went even 10 less. Then he went down to 20. And then he finally went down to 10. Now, um, I'm going to ask you guys if you don't know, and I don't know if Google's going to give the answer to this, but how many people do you think was in Sodom and Gomorrah at that time? If he's asking for 50 righteous people. So 50 people out of how many do you assume? And if you don't know, I can ask Google because I'm curious on this myself. I don't, I don't know, to be honest. Well, we know Abraham was asking because that's where Lot and his wife and his family was. Yeah. Right, me. How many people was in Sodom and Gomorrah when God wanted to strike them down? According to Wikipedia, Genesis chapter 18, no. verse 23. 
Starting at 50 people, Abraham negotiates with That's God not... to spare Sodom if 10 righteous people could be found. God sends two angels to destroy Sodom. Okay. That's... How many people were there in total in Sodom and Gomorrah? I don't know if we're even going to get the answer to this. It just talked about, right? So, I guess, unless you guys know, I I would assume that there'd be, well, I would assume both, at least a couple hundred. Well, they were both cities. The cities usually have more, than, more people than towns. Yeah. So, but the number's irrelevant, but the thing is, um, that just goes to show that God obviously he has a heart for the people. That even if there was 10, now do you suppose that he could have went down as far as, I'm going to be bold. What do you think if Abraham asked God, what if there's only, and not, not counting Abraham and his family, what if Abraham asked God, what if there's only one righteous person would you destroy? What do you think God's answer would be to that? If he asked for just one individual, one single person. Oh, that's... Uh, well, that's, that's what I was going to say. Because it says when the Lord answered Abraham, he finished speaking after Abraham had asked for the sake of ten. And when the Lord had finished speaking, and I can't remember, and I can't read the rest of that yeah. picture right there. Chris, oh, it says he left, he left and Abraham returned home. So it's kind of curious why um, the Lord left right, right at that moment. I was, I knew maybe he was thinking that Abraham was going to ask for more. Or yeah. he didn't want him to ask for a lesser amount. Okay, now I'm going to jump just a little bit ahead. What does God wind up doing anyway? Not not destroying it? No, he destroys it. He destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. After all this is said and done, later down the road, you're going to find out oh, oh, he oh, does I, destroy I Sodom and Gomorrah. So, this goes to show... God's already had his mind made up. Um, I know it's a tough pill to swallow because even with the subject we talked about earlier, God's got his mind made up on that. Um, I'm going to ask a bold question, and I'm going to stick behind my answer, but with a little bit of hesitance. If God makes his mind up on something... Do you think that God would even change his mind if he's already got his mind set up on something? No, he, he won't. I don't, th I don't think, no. I think maybe it would all depend on the person. Okay. I was going to say the same thing. Look at Noah and the flood. His intentions were to destroy, but because of Abram's righteous, he saved Abram, but he still destroyed, he still destroyed the world. That he, he intended to do. So I, I, I know I'm that's that's a loaded question. I know it is. But it's something to really think about. Um that's all I got for that. If you guys have anything to add. I mean I'm not Could trying we, to take sorry. Couldn't allow Abraham to go down and get Lot and bring Lot and his family out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Before he destroys it. Okay. I'm gonna I know we're jumping, we're gonna get there later. Now and and you're right, he does. Now, Johnny, I know me and Brenda knows the answer to this. What happens to Lot's wife? And what does she do and what happens and why? If you don't know, you don't know, but it's it's an interesting and this ties in with this, we're just jumping a little bit ahead in the Bible. Oh, she's turned into a condiment that you use on your food. Oh, okay. That wasn't what I was thinking, but I was thinking a different thing. But yeah, Tomato? I couldn't remember what it was. But yeah, you're you're, you're right. I know she kind of almost gave you the answer, Johnny. But go ahead and finish. Is it is, is it, it a, a tomato? tomato? No, it's not a tomato. Do you, if you don't know, just say you don't know. We're not going to hold it against you. 
I, I really, I really don't know. Okay. Oh, 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 salt. Oh, okay. So, does that show that God's a righteous? And um, I'm trying to watch the word, but um, I wouldn't use the word fair. Although sometimes it sometimes it seems harsh. But a fair and harsh judge. I mean, I I'm trying to watch because God's a loving God, and I and we don't want anybody to fear God. Well, I should I get. I want to I want to watch my words because I know this is going to be turned against me somehow, some way. Um, fear the judgment of God. We'll put it that way. We want to fear the judgment of God, but we don't want to fear God Himself. Um, that's how I'm trying to word it. But I'm trying to be careful in my words. Because we don't want God's judgment. We want God's grace. But in order to get God's grace, we got to go through Jesus to receive his grace. Does that make any sense, Johnny? Yes. That makes sense. Um, I know, that, and I can already tell right now, and that's okay, we don't. I'm going to go ahead and go on bold statement. I don't care what people think. They can disagree with me. Um, I'm hoping comments, or I'm struggling in the comments. I'm hoping they're available. But if somebody disagrees, feel free to leave a comment because we're not always right. We're just doing the best that we can and being obedient to what we feel that the Lord is telling us to do and that's to share the word to the best of our ability. We're no scholars. Let me know when we're at the end because I want to do my intro. Okay. Um, we're my basically answer. there unless you or Brenda got something else to add. I just wanted to throw that out there. I'm not trying to take away from you. I just I want the people to understand no, that good. we're not against the people. Um, we understand it's a touchy subject. We understand that it's going to tap on, step on some toes. But we want them to realize this is coming from the Bible. This is coming from the best of our knowledge and our ability. We could have said a few things wrong, and if we have, we apologize. You know, we're not trying to offend anybody, but we want people to understand the love of God, but we also need to understand God is a just God. And if we do something that goes against God, he's not happy about it. And I'll just leave it at that. Right, you got anything, Brenda? If not, we'll let Johnny do his intro. No, that's it for me. Okay, do you want that slide again, Johnny, or you got an intro on your own? Uh, uh, well, uh, is it the same slide? I can take the same slide. Okay. I'll be back next week. Oh, come on, Johnny. You got better than that. <laughs> He said he had an intro I'm for us. <laughs> Can you do the Honor Schwarzenegger, uh, uh, the way Honor Schwarzenegger does it? I don't like doing it that way. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. All right, we'll leave it at that. That is not righteous. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to make fun of nobody like me. You're right, Johnny. I'll be back. I like the old saying. I don't care. I'll be back. <laughs> you, you said you said it to us on uh, on YouTube. I forget oh, exactly right. what it was, but you said I'm not going to say that phrase or something like that. Mom says I'm going to make a movie about music composers. I'll be I'll be Mo, I'll be Beethoven, and Van Damme says I'll be Mozart, and Schwarzenegger looks at him and says. Come on, guys, I'm not going to say that stupid phrase. <laughs> yeah, you said it, but it's still funny hearing it again. <laughs> All right, Johnny, so how are we doing this today? Oh, okay, I'll have, I'll have let's see. I'll, I'll let you go, Chris, and then Brenda, and then me. All right. All right, dear Lord, once again, we thank you for the opportunity to go through your word, Lord. Lord, we just ask that those that are listening, Lord, that 
hear your word and they hear it with an open heart, Lord, that they don't look at it with judgment, they don't look at it with anger, Lord, that sometimes your Bible's got some pretty touchy subjects, but they're from you, they're from, they're your words, Lord. All we can do is take your word and just ingest it and understand it's the best of our ability, Lord. And we understand that some people aren't going to like what they hear, but they need to know the truth, Lord. So we don't apologize for telling the truth, Lord. We don't apologize if we hurt people's feelings. We're not here to hurt feelings. We're not here to make everybody happy. We're here to share your word, Lord. And sometimes sharing your word is not exactly an easy thing to do, especially when we talk about subjects that we discuss today. But we understand that people need to understand you are a righteous God and anything that is unrighteous is against you. And if we're doing anything that is against you, we need to turn our ways and turn towards you, Lord, because you're our glory, Lord. And we just thank you that you're a gracious God, Lord, that we want your grace, that we know we deserve death, Lord. We deserve, we deserve eternal damnation. But because of your love for us, because Jesus died on the cross for us, Lord, we don't have to fear that damnation, Lord. Yeah. We just thank you that you give us the grace, Lord, that even when we do fail, even when we do turn against you, Lord, that all we got to do is turn back towards you, Lord, and you'll make everything right again. I just thank you so much for everything that you have done, Lord, and I can't thank you enough. And I thank you in advance for everything that you're about to do. And I thank you for Johnny and Brenda for what they bring to the table, Lord. And I just thank you again for everything that you have done and everything that you will do. Dear Lord, help the people that I want to help. Let them see that what we said is out of love, not spite. Let let them see the arms of Christ come around them and support them and just love them as they are. That we're not, that just because they have something, that they're doing something unrighteous doesn't mean that they're not lovable. That we love them just the way they are and keep us all from being judges, Lord. And just help us to take what we learned today and just take it with us through this week till we meet again. In Jesus' name I pray. Dear Lord, thank you for giving me this opportunity to study your, your word. And forgive me, Lord, for getting kind of frustrated with that. I just, I don't mean to offend anybody. I just want people to know that I'm trying to spread your word and I want people to do the right thing so Lord just open open their eyes and make them realize what's important so they don't make any, any bad mistakes I ask this in Jesus name Amen I'm really hungry <laughs> one second we end up.